Hey everybody, this is Wendy at the Broken Needle Quilt Shop in Bunn, North Carolina, and today I'm going to show you how to do an attic window. Most of the time, if you have a panel such as this that's pretty busy, you can cut up your fabric and just add in your frame. However, if you have a digital panel such as this with a beautiful picture, you don't want to distort your picture. So I'm going to show you a trick how to add in your frame and not distort your attic window. I've chosen to do a six pane attic window. The first thing we need to do is trim the selvages off and cut the panel into six equal pieces. I've cut my fabric into six equal pieces and now we need to add in the window frames. If I add the frames right now, our picture will get distorted. As I move these around, notice the gaps in between. You'll see that the picture gets distorted. The roof doesn't align exactly as it should, and over here, my tire will get wider and wider if I just add in, you know, the picture's going to be stretched out. So there is a trick to that, to get everything aligned, and I'm going to show you how to do that. The trick is, whatever you put in, you must take out. Our window frame is one and a half inches wide, so we need to take out a half inch here, 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 all the way around at all intersecting blocks. We lose the other half inch in the seam allowance. First I want to show you how to do the window frames. I want the 3D effect of the moonlight shining in on the window and in order to do that I need a light shade of window frame going horizontally and I also need a darker shade of window frame going vertically. My window frames are one and a half inches wide and I also need a one and a half inch square of the lighter shade of frame to put on top of the darker shade. We're going to go over to the sewing machine and sew from corner to corner on this block. Now that I've sewn this to the vertical frame, we need to trim our block one half inch vertically and one half inch horizontally to account for the width of the window frame. Now that this is trimmed, I'm going to take my horizontal strip and sew it right sides together on the bottom here using a quarter inch seam. And then once that's done, I'm going to press it open so it will be back like this. And then I'm going to take my vertical strip, sew it right sides together with a quarter inch seam and when I open it, it will look like the window frame. Now my window frames are complete and we're going to sew these together in two rows. This will be row one and this will be row two, but I want to add sashing in here. So I'm going to need to put a piece of sashing in between these two blocks and these two blocks and these two blocks and these two blocks. And then I'm going to sew them together, row one with a quarter inch seam and row two with a quarter inch seam. Now I've got my two rows sewn together and I want to complete the sashing by adding a sashing in the middle. And when I do that, I want to make sure that I pin these areas in place so that match up. We don't want it to be off like that, <laughs> so we need to make sure we pin it in place carefully so that when we're done, it matches perfectly when we press it open. Also, after that is done, we're going to add sashing to the sides, one on each side, and one on the bottom, and one on the top. Now that our sashing is complete, we're going to do a final border, and it'll be a mitered corner border. I'll show you how to do that. We are going to use the same wood grain fabric that I used for the inside of the frame. When doing mitered corners, the general rule of thumb is that you have twice the width of your border hanging over on each end of your project. So, as you can see, I've got about seven inches here and seven inches here because the width of my border is three and a half. So I'm going to put the pieces right sides together and 
Make sure to use a locking stitch or a back stitch to secure your seam. We are going to start one quarter in and using a quarter inch seam, so all the way up to the top, stopping one quarter inch away from the edge of your project. I've completed my first miter corner here, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So, as before, you see we have these two pieces are flapping in the wind. We stopped a quarter inch on each side, and make sure to lock your stitches so they don't come apart when you're playing with it. So I'm going to pull, fold my quilt down, and put these two pieces right sides together. I'm going to kind of fold this at a at an angle. You see I got it flat here on top of each other, right sides together. And the way I pressed it, you see we need to make sure we press, um, not press, we're going to pin this up. See on the back? Pin it up before we go to sew. Got it in the back there. I want to make sure it's not going to get in my way. So now I know it's up and we are going to start sewing right here. You see where we stopped there? That's where we want to sew. But before we do that, we need to mark it and we're going to take our ruler and spin it around. Let's see, the 45 degree mark here. Placed it right here on the seams. See the stitches here? That's where we want our 45 degree marker of our ruler to be right on the seams. And you see I'm getting this angle here. So again, right where we stopped, that's where we're going to start. So I'm going to make a mark here, a diagonal mark, all the way down. I'm going to pin this and then take it over to the sewing machine and sew right along the line. Spooky attic window complete.